Hey, what's good, everybody? Uh, you know, the other day I went to the mountains to visit. I believe, actually, yesterday on New Year's, I went to the mountain to visit the eagles, right? There's these eagles that, you know, they came, uh, you know, a few years ago. Over five years ago now, I believe. But, uh, you know, they first started coming to me in dreams and everything. And then it turned out that, you know, they were nearby. But... Uh, when I got there, a red-tailed hawk swooped in and, you know, it, it was uh, flying around, as you can see in this video. And so I wanted to read this message. This is a book that I bought a long time ago. It's called Animal Speak by Ted Andrews. Um, and, you know, back then, I guess I was trying to get into what the meanings of the animals were, were you know, as I started noticing them more. Uh, but, you know, this red-tailed hawk... Meaning, uh, I'm just going to read it because I think this has been one of the best, um, you know, meanings of what the red tail hawk symbolizes that I've read. So, I'm just going to read it to you guys. So, check it out. This is what it says by Ted Andrews, right? Um, red tail hawk, spiritual meaning. Part of the role for the individual beside whom red tail hawk flies is that of guardian of the earth mother. These are individuals who will possess an astute awareness of the concept of the interconnectedness of all things and will have an inner reverence for all life. These are the souls that are involved in making the world a better place, whether locally or globally. They will be protectors of the earth mother and tread softly upon her, encouraging and educating others to do the same. Often, they are either found initiating or actively involved in environmental causes where their keen perception and insight will serve their chosen cause well. Yet it is their day-to-day -day existence and fundamental philosophy, foundation of action and belief that distinguishes these individuals as true champions of Mother Earth as they seek to live in harmony with the Inamaka and all that she births, provides, nurtures, and sustains. The red tail of the hawk only appears when the bird reaches maturity. When looking to the human beside whom red-tailed hawk flies, this is quite significant, for it indicates that the red feathers are not easily given and must instead be earned over time. Hence, the symbolism of the red tail feathers emerging only with age and experience. Be ever alert for the individual the red tail is flying near, for the red-tailed hawk will soar beside the individual whose own gift of vision is exceptionally acute. This may take the form of precognitive dreams and or visions during which these souls are quite literally able to see the future. If the gift of vision is not present from birth, then there will exist within the red hawk soul the ability to pierce the veil that separates falsehood from truth. They will also possess an intensive gaze that can leave those who might find themselves the object of such a gaze squirming under the penetrating stare. Equally, Red-tailed hawk individual will have the ability to view the broad picture in much the same fashion that a hawk can gain a wide view of their surroundings while soaring on the unseen currents of wind as they ride the sky. The human counterpart will be a believer in the philosophy that all things happen for a reason, and it will be this awareness of the big picture that will assist both themselves and those whom they share their gift of keen insight with through many a difficult time. To accept this totem, is to be knighted as a guardian and protector of the earth mother and all her children. Once this fundamental kundalini energy unfurls as the red tail feathers emerge, the beauty and depth of spirit that shines brilliantly forth will be both inspiration and guidance for others who may be just beginning or in the process of their own awakening. So I just wanted to share that. Um, you know, it's funny... Like, this was posted, uh, I, I'm reading it from this Facebook page, and it's funny because today, I shared a song, and it had, f and it was five minutes and five seconds, right? And it's a song, very personal song, that I went through many hardships to write, right? That's like the, the epitome of, you know, learning and then helping others from your experience, right? And right now, as I'm reading this, it's 5.05, right? Because... You know, it's funny. You know, the synchronicities, right? This ended up, it has 500 likes and with the hearts and everything on Facebook, I guess that's where it's tagged, like this this post. And um, 
and what do you call it? I guess you know the song I posted today with this. You know, I I, I put some stuff to it, explaining what the song meant. And it was 5.05, and I noticed that at the end. It jumped out at me, right? It, it was 5 minutes and 5 seconds, so I was like... So now it makes sense. I knew it got my attention that it was significant, and now I see why. Because here I am, just what, a few hours later, posting this, and as I read it, you know, it has that, you know. So, um, I already have a video about the red tail hawk I spoke about when I got my feathers. I believe the only thing that's not in there is after those feathers that were given to me... Of the red tail hawk and I describe each each one had a task that I had to complete and the the red tail hawk was given to me by the spirit world but after uh, I believe sometime last year I received another red tail hawk but it was in the spirit world and I remember like it was only in the dream that I received it and when I woke up I was like well why what did that mean why didn't I why didn't I receive that one like why didn't it translate over to this world but then after i understood like it had even a higher significance that you know i didn't even need it in the physical it was being given to me in the spirit world because that's what i had conquered in a sense like you know something that that isn't even seen here right like how he, he's talking about those that have the connection with the red-tailed hawk are able to pierce through the veil right so that's what was shown to me and actually it was funny because the very very first one i don't know if i mentioned it in that video but the very very first red tail hawk feather that i received was actually kind of damaged right like it was crazy like uh i was working on some set right and um there was um i don't know it was just really hot right we were doing this funeral scene right for some movie or some show some tv show and uh it was like over 100 degrees outside and and it was just hot. We were in these suits. And this this older gentleman, he um he ended up collapsing, I guess, because of the heat. And when he fell, he cracked his head, like, on the concrete. And, you know, when he got up, he had to cut, like, by his head. And then after, I guess, you know, he started having a seizure. Well, someone got him a chair because they didn't even have chairs for us. So it was all bad on the part of the production, right? But then we got him a chair. But when he sat down on the chair... You know, we sat him down. He started having a seizure. And uh, when he started having the seizure, like, everyone just scattered like roaches, right, when you turn the lights on. And then I went, I caught him, and I, I helped him. And then, you know, he had all the foam coming out of his mouth. So I caught all them, you know, like a baby, right? I was holding him to make sure he didn't choke on his spit. But it was crazy. Everyone just flew, right? Everyone ran. And then finally, like, the guy, one of the production people came, but he didn't know nothing. He, he had him like that laying down. And then I was like, like, hello, like he's choking on his spit. So I grabbed him again and I held him like that until the fireman came, right? So he wouldn't choke on his spit. And then, you know, this guy didn't know what he was doing except, you know, once the fireman came, then I handed him over to him. After that happened, you know, we were by the curb kind of. And then I go and on the side of the curb, there was a red tail hawk feather, right? So that was the first one I ever got. And I thought that, like, you know, but it was very damaged, right? It was right there kind of on the side of the street, off the curb, you know. So I guess, you know, who knows, maybe it had been run over too. It was, like, dirty. You know, it was, like, right there where I guess it had probably been wet and everything, right? So it kind of had black marks all over it. You know, you could tell it was very dingy. But I grabbed it, and I put it in, in between this piece of paper. And I put it in my pocket, right? Folded up the paper, everything. So I put it in my pocket so, you know. Later on, I go to look at it, you know, because I think we had a film, whatever scene we were filming. Then later I went to look at it, and the feather's gone. And I retraced my steps, like, where could this feather be? Like, what was going on? And then, but it had left the perfect imprint on this piece of paper, you know? I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Shroud of Turin, how some people say that's Jesus, and, like, when he left, like, he left the print. So that's how this feather left the print on this piece of paper. And at first I was like, why? Why was it taken from me? Did I do something wrong? Like, like I thought, like, you know, they rewarded me for doing this. But then what did I do wrong then? What? Like, I don't get it. Like, was I too happy about getting this feather? Like, why? I forgot what it was. Maybe something, you know, or maybe I told someone, like, oh, wow, look, I got a feather. I don't know what it was. I really don't remember. Maybe I didn't tell anybody. I really don't remember. But I was just in my head, like, why was it taken from me? But then... You know, then I felt like they were telling me, like, well, no, it wasn't actually. It was just, you know, you're going to get a better one, right? Like, it was just kind of like that was there, but 
at the same time it would like you didn't need that dingy one right like it's gonna be replaced with like with with uh, uh you know a nicer one a prettier one and which took a while like not a long while after but i think you know sometime after was when i started finding them and it was like one after the other right it just after these tests i was going through but on that day it was like i mean it meant a lot just the fact that it didn't like talk about something spiritual I had the feather. I put it perfectly in my pocket so it wouldn't disappear. And somehow it was like transmuted, right? It, it it left into the spirit world. Like there was no explanation. Like I retraced my steps. I didn't drop it. You know, I looked. And then after it clicked, like, wait a second. It left this perfect imprint. Like how is that even possible? You know, like the feather had been there. Like these feathers, colors don't run. Like how did it leave like a reddish, like all this stuff? Like these feathers aren't like... When you tint like your clothes or nothing, they don't leave like these colors, you know what I mean? And that's what it left on this paper as I guess it transmuted, you know, this space. So, so you know, I think that was it was all connected, this message. It was something a little more spiritual than I had the, the understanding for at the moment, right? But at first it was just that, right? Like me was like, why was it taken away? Like you guys just gifted me my first red tail hawk feather and then you took it away. So I was really, you know, because I had already seen, I think, uh, you know, the importance of the red tail hawk feather, right? So when it was taken away, I mean, when it was gifted, I, I was happy and then it was taken away. But then, you know, I, I made that whole video. I'll put the link to it about the feathers I received. So all together, actually, so I had received that one and, um, you know, then all the ones I talk about. And then I had also received another one in the spirit world. Ah, Unless, you know, it's kind of like showing me like that one, the very first one that was now in the spirit world, I was reunited with it. Like, I don't know what, like five years later or something like, you know, I was reunited with it uh, in the spirit world. It just clicked right now. So I guess that was my aha moment. So that might have been that feather. And now it looked beautiful, right? It was all clean and everything in the spirit world. So it could have been that same feather that I was reunited with that was waiting for me in the spirit world. Like there was a message there, right? Um, you know, maybe it's deeper. Like sometimes we think things are lost that aren't really lost. Right. And, uh, so, you know, you just have to have that awareness to understand it. But, you know, I wanted to share the red tail hawk, obviously to me, you know, I feel like it's a, like a totem now, right? Like that. I, I guess, you know, you, you heard everything I read, the responsibilities that come with it, but you know, it became a guide for me. It definitely like even just that visiting the Eagles, and it appeared to me, right? And it kind of, uh, it stole the show. Even though I went to see the Eagles, the Red Tail Hawk came swooping in. And as you can see in the video, it was just uh, right there doing circles. And there was actually two of them, which I didn't see till after. You know, when I look back at the picture, I had taken a picture too. And then it was like, oh, wait a second, there were two Red Tail Hawks. So that's weird because I don't always see two, you know what I mean? Like posted like that. I do actually, you know, because they hunt together. They're they have no problem. They're not those kind of like solitary birds. They'll hunt together. So, you know, it was a beautiful thing. So I'll end it there. This one way longer than what I was planning to make it. But of course, things are as they're supposed to be, right? Just like the message from the red tail hawk. It, everything happens for a reason. And I understand that. So, uh, you know, hope you guys are well. Uh, all the best for this upcoming year. You know, we're now in the new year. Um, you know, if you go by the regular not regular, but, you know, this, uh, I guess, the Gregorian calendar. But, you know, obviously, it's not New Year yet for anyone that follows more uh, indigenous, um, you know, traditional way, right? So, with that, I'll leave you there and all the best. Peace. Wait forever, yeah.